guys, Alyssa Bethencourt here with uh, Channel 13. You can see we are standing right now outside of the CCSD administrative building. Behind me, there are about 100 protesters here with signs in hand. And what they're asking for today is for safer schools. A lot of them coming out after the incident was reported at El Dorado High School last week, where a teacher was reportedly sexually assaulted and strangled by one of her students. Uh, but they came out here this morning to ask for change and to ask for the school district to really step up and do something about what we've been seeing in our schools. I'm going to step over here really quick and grab Vicki Crydell. Vicki, we are on Facebook Live right now. Vicki has been a teacher for over two decades. She's been with the district since 2013, yes? Correct. Uh, Vicki, why are we out here today? Because um, the staff of CCSD is tired of standing by and watching violence happening in our schools without any action. This sign that you have in your hand, show me a little bit about what it says and why y'all decided to bring these out here. So. We, they weren't listening to us. We've been going to board meetings. Every one of the teachers who organized this event is someone who speaks up at board meetings. We've been going for months, and they're not listening. So we were trying to do something that was um, louder, that maybe they would listen to us when we say that there's a problem that needs to be addressed. For those of you on Facebook Live that don't know, CCSD actually held a press conference yesterday afternoon to address some of the issues that we've been seeing in all of our schools across the valley, really. Uh, they announced that they'd be implementing some new safety protocols like cameras in uh, the entrances of the schools. They also said they'd be providing emergency buttons for uh, teachers so they can call 911. Do you think, Vicki, that those steps were enough or do you think they have to do more? The problem is that the things they were suggesting that they want to do are great for next year. Like if they can get them all installed and in place for next year, that's awesome. We need something right now so that Tuesday when we go back to work, there are measures in place to help keep all the students and all the staff safer. Vicki, there's also been some concern that when y'all do, if you do return after spring break, that some might not. Some might not go back to the classroom. And CCSD, as we know, has been dealing with a staffing shortage for years, but especially since the pandemic really kicked up. Do we think that there's going to be a heightened staffing issue after the incident at El Dorado? I think it's very possible. I've received a number of messages from educators who don't want to return to work because they don't feel safe at their school sites. And it makes me feel really sad. Everybody should feel safe in their classrooms and in the building. So um, we are, there are some measures we're going to be suggesting today that are short-term measures. And then the longer-term measure would be addressing restorative justice, as is mandated by the state, and making sure that all staff in CCSD and all students are trained in the restorative justice practices. Because what we're doing right now is not restorative justice. And that's one piece of the, the puzzle that's the problem in CCSD. Vicki, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, for those of you just now joining our Facebook Live, we are standing outside of the CCSD administrative building. You can see some protesters uh, in the background with some posters and signs in hand. A lot of them asking for uh, violence in CCSD to be controlled. If you've been following the news, you've seen that the school district just came out with an announcement yesterday saying that they plan to implement heightened security measures at a lot of their campuses across the valley. But as you just heard there from Vicki Crydell, she's been a teacher in the district uh, for eight years and she's been a teacher for more than two decades. She doesn't think that those heightened security measures are enough. We're going to take a step this way really quick because I believe the protesters are going to start walking that way. But uh, they just got here about 20 minutes ago. They plan to be here for a good portion of the morning. And again, all they're asking for is change and heightened security measures in our campuses here uh, in the valley. But we're going to keep you posted with what happens here at this protest. If you have any questions, post them down on the Facebook Live and I'll make sure to answer as quickly as I possibly can. Thanks for bringing the good system.
Yeah, we do want to make speeches, Brandon. I think we should pick you a little bit later.
For those of you on uh, Facebook Live, we are preparing to go live on uh, Channel 13 in just a few minutes. So you're going to see me tune in for that live report. But just in case you're just now joining our Facebook Live, we're right outside of the CCSD administrative building. Uh, there's some protesters standing behind me. We're just trying to adjust our camera right now. Uh, but you can see them with signs in hand. Many of them holding uh, those posters that read, Stop the School Violence. Of course, this protest was organized after there was an incident at El Dorado High School last week with one of the teachers there, a 16 year old a teenage boy, now facing more than a dozen felony charges after he sexually assaulted and then strangled his teacher. That's why they're out here today. They want the district to make some tangible uh, changes. And uh, right now, they're saying that school leadership has not done enough. I'm going to step out of frame really quick because we are getting ready for that live report, but I'll join back on this Facebook Live in just a few minutes. Stand by. No pressure. Well, Kalina, they've been here for about 30 minutes now, but it's what we were talking about earlier. You know, a lot of people just want to see change in schools across the district. Many of their posters and signs that you just mentioned uh, saying stop the school violence. That one right in front of us saying protect our teachers. And that's really what they want. You know, yesterday the school district did hold a press conference saying that they were going to implement additional security measures across the district. Things like uh, security cameras, panic buttons that teachers can press in their classrooms. And they were also going to ramp up uh, the police presence on different campuses but even though that's going to happen protesters here say that is not enough and they are just asking for additional change to happen before the school year ends in May. Now we'll see if that's going to happen and if this protest makes any changes actually come to life but for now Kalina I'll send it back to you in the studio.
small or wonky they might think they are, then together we can piece them together to make something that works. Taking in pieces from dozens of long-term goals was created. It is by no means exhaustive of the changes that need to be made, but it is a place to start in terms of goals as well as in furthering collaboration as a community. Our short-term goals are one, all intercoms, um, classroom buttons, and phones must be working and manned at all times. Two, all cameras that are currently installed in schools must be on and operational. Three, Immediate release of a district-wide policy on what to do in case of an altercation or a fight in a classroom. Four, all schools must create a safety plan in regards to school violence and safety, implement it, and publish it to the school website. And our long-term goals, one, replace the new grading policy with a standards-based grading policy that is well thought out and organized, created with input from a large variety of educators from CCSD, including several teachers from every type of school, every grade le level, every trustee district, every region, and every content area. Train teachers, admin, students, and parents properly before implementing it. Two, create a true restorative justice plan. This plan must be complete and comprehensive, and it must include input from local organizations and experts on restorative justice. Once a plan is created, we must implement it appropriately. This includes, but is not limited to, taking the whole child into consideration. Behavioral, social emotional, academics, socioeconomics, past, present, and future goals of that child. B, it must uh, include conflict resolution and restorative justice implementation implementation training for all involved. Students, staff, including support professionals, teachers, licensed staff, admin, social workers, CCSD, PD, volunteers and coaches, parents and community members. Three, creating or purchasing and implementing a social emotional learning program that focuses on the whole child. Lessen the required standardized testing in exchange for more opportunities for academic learning and mental health needs. Train educators and admin in these programs with robust, comprehensive training and then implement them. And four, organize to retain educators and education staff. This includes a pay increase for those CCSD staff members that have worked through the pandemic and are staying on, talking to at least 100 teachers about teachers' health trust, making sure to include different demographics of teachers and teacher types, and implementing action to resolve the hostile work environment created by the district-wide retaliation and abusive admin. A first step for this might be to do thorough but anonymous exit interviews with departing staff. This list of goals might, as be, uh, might also be seen as a list of demands, and that's fine with me. Society demands so much out of public education, and it is high time that public education demands a little too. Thank you. everybody thank you so much for being out here today it is incredible um, to see so many teachers show up on a day of our spring break my name is Alexis Salt A-L-E-X-I-S-S-A-L-T I -S 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 am here um, as my colleague Ms. Conroe has laid out some of the things that we would like to have happen I am here to somewhat throw down the gauntlet we are not going away <laughs> Um, we are only, yeah, we are not going away. Woo! We are getting bigger. People are hearing us. We are getting, we are growing in number. We cannot allow this to continue. Uh, teachers are not safe. And if teachers are not safe at school, I need every parent in Clark County School District to understand that neither are your children. If a teacher can be assaulted in her classroom. I have a 15 year old daughter and she was the first person I thought of when this happened. And think of myself, I thought of my, my daughter and she's a hundred pounds soaking wet. What's gonna happen to her? These, these safety measures that we're trying to implement are for, they're not just for us because teachers working conditions are the conditions in which your students learn. 
And we need the community's help. Because in the building right behind me, there are more than adequate security measures. I could not walk in there right now and talk to Dr. Jara. I could not go in there and demand a meeting. I could not go in there angrily and knock on his door or go into his office. And yet, these are the conditions under which teachers are expected to work every day. So what is good for Dr. Jara is good for us. And I have a message for Dr. Jara. We are not going away. We are gonna fight this battle. We will die on this hill. We are not going to stop until we are safe. Thank you all again so much for coming out on a Wednesday, giving up your sleeping in. You all look amazing. Thank you. Oh, and now, uh, Miss Danielle Ford. Hi, thank you so much for being here. I was not planning on speaking. I'm here to support our wonderful and valuable staff and the, the staff that is protecting our students. Um, I am elected to represent the community and to speak as a voice for the community. However, I want to make it clear that I'm here as a concerned citizen and a parent of two CCSD students. Uh, I have attended a lot of board meetings over the last several years, and I have listened to our staff and our students and our community leaders come up twice, sometimes three times a month, and tell us exactly what is happening in classrooms and exactly what is needed to fix our problems. And I am appalled that it seems like maybe me and a couple other trustees and some other central staff hear what's being said, but the decision makers and the ones who are making operational decisions for our schools must not be listening because the initiatives and the policies that are coming out of all of the violence and the different uh, unstable working conditions that we're seeing are not reflective of what the community is asking for. Yesterday there was, there was a press conference with a handful of people that nobody really knows who they are um, and I don't think that anybody was too impressed with what was said there. There's a lot of talk often about the way to solve problems is to bring the community together and to start a new task force and a new coalition and a new working group and a new committee and we're going to call it a, a new shiny name so that people think we're actually doing really work, real work. I don't know about you, but I feel that if anybody wants to hear from the community, they would be right here today. Anybody who wants a town hall could just watch the replay of what these wonderful teachers are telling us. And anybody who is going to ignore what is coming out of this protest, who's going to ignore the demands that are t being told to us, the solutions presented by the experts in the classroom, anyone who ignores that will be cr committing an operational failure. Thank you. I'm sorry, next up is Jamie Chudinski. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Jamie Tedrinsky for the record. I feel like I need to say that because I attend um, a lot of school board meetings. I think I've attended almost every school board meeting in the past two years. And I'm, I'm a career educator, been teaching for 10 years, been in CCSD for seven, and um, I'm sick of not being listened to. I am sick of going month after month to school board meetings and talking about the issues that we see in our schools and being told that it's operational and nothing happening. But what I really wanna focus on today are the good things that happen in our schools because this attack on the teacher made national news. All right, the attack on the teacher at Cheyenne made national news. The student fight at Las Vegas High School made national news. And what is not making national news is all the good things that come out of this district. We have national ranked mariachi bands, all right? Um, the mariachi director at Las Vegas High School was invited to the Grammys, all right? Um, students from We the People at my high school at Canyon Springs won a fully paid trip to Washington, D.C. to compete. My school is sending kids to nationals for speech and debate. 
one of my kids is going to Stanford on a full ride scholarship. There are hundreds of examples of kids doing amazing things, of teachers doing amazing things in this district, and all that gets drowned out because of the violence. We should be celebrating our students and our, and our staff who are succeeding, who are making their dreams come true, who are overcoming obstacles, and instead we're becoming a national joke. I see us on the news all the time. When this attack happened, I got calls from six different people within an hour of it making on national news. Are you okay? Was that your school? What's happening? Are your friends safe? I have, I have teacher friends crying at lunch because they think they're going to be next. I have students who are afraid to come to school because school is no longer their safe place. There's been a group of dedicated teachers who have been going to board meetings time after time after time. We get labeled troublemakers. We get made fun of. But our voices matter. And I'm here to ask other teachers in this crowd, other support staff, other people who work in this district, parents, community members, we need your voices. When there's only a few of us speaking, it's really easy to discredit us. It's really easy to label us. It's really easy to say the problems aren't that bad because there's only five people speaking about it. Right, right now we're single solo voices. We need to be a chorus demanding change. And until we become that chorus, things aren't going to get better. And our students, our staff, we all deserve better. Our campuses are not combat zones. And right now, it feels like I wake up to go to a war I did not sign up for. I went to school to become a teacher. I didn't get drafted as a soldier in, this, in, this, in these issues in CCSD. We are the fifth largest district. We have power to do good, and we're not doing good with that power we have. It is time for the superintendent and his cabinet to stand up to make those changes, to make it a safe place for all students, all educators, all community members. Thank you. Yeah. Good morning. Thank you for all the uh, speakers that showed up today. Thank you to all of our attendees and participants. We appreciate it. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, we have one more speaker. Huh? You're going to translate? We have one more speaker who's going to translate our, um, our goals into Spanish. Buenos dias. Me llamo Brenda Zamora. Como están? Brenda Zamora for the record. Oh, gosh. That is a habit. <laughs> um, I'm going to be just translating the goals. I am a mom. I'm an SOT parent in our school. I have two kids in the district, so this is very important to me because it affects me and my family. So I am going to be translating our goals. The first goal, la primera meta. The, the switch is real, y'all. Um, la primera meta para nosotros y las familias y los todos en el distrito es para que todos los botones en los, los salones, los teléfonos y los inter, intercomunicadores estén trabajando y tengan man, que sigan mantenidos para que sigan trabajando. Si no están trabajando, ¿cómo van a ser successful? Um, todas las cámaras que están ahorita en el distrito, que estén trabajando y estén funcionando. La tercera meta, que todos estén, que tengan una póliza. I'm translating in my head as this goes, so bear with me, y'all. Estoy traduciendo cómo va y cómo voy leyendo las cosas. Todas las escuelas deben de crear un plan de seguridad en relación con la violencia. Um, y la seguridad de la escuela, aplicando una póliza que sea para todos. Y las metas largas, que tengan reemplazar la nueva póliza de calificaciones con una póliza de calificaciones basada en estándares que estén bien pensada y organizada, creada con el apoyo de todos los edu educadores en el distrito. Crear un verdadero plan de justicia Retroactiva. Gosh, sorry, y'all. Restaurativa. Restaurativa. Uh, que está en todo el personal y que involucre a las organizaciones que están haciendo este trabajo ahorita. De verdad, seguir pensando en los maestros. Estos, esto es lo que está pidiendo los maestros. El, los trabajadores de apoyo, los estudiantes y las familias. Por favor, vamos a tener esto en español también puesto en el, en el website que han hecho para este evento. Muchas gracias a todos por estar aquí. Gracias, gracias, gracias de todo corazón de todos. Tengan un buen día. 
Thank you, Mrs. Zamora, for helping us in translation for Spanish. We have one more speaker before I come up here and take questions. Trustee Linda Cavazos is coming up to the microphone right now. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to be very brief because this is not my rally, but I'm standing here in solidarity with our teachers and our support staff. They are the voices that you need to hear today. You hear our voices all the time, sometimes way too much. The folks that you see here at this rally, these are the folks that cannot, we cannot do without them to run our schools. You can do without the trustees, don't answer that, but we cannot do without the support professionals and the teachers. If we do not take care of all of our employees, then how are they going to take care of and how are they going to educate our children? And so I will always stand in solidarity with our employees Something must be done, and I am speaking here again, as Trustee Ford said, as a concerned citizen. I've managed by hook or crook to get five children through this district. I still have one grandchild, a young lady, who is in this district. I want her to be safe, and I want her children to be safe. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. All right, for the record, my name is Carolina Colseth, another fellow board speaker every couple of weeks. I am now taking questions from media. We'll start left to right. <laughs> um, yes, just as a follow-up to um, yesterday's press conference, uh, talk about just some of the steps that were mentioned. And are you for, against them, or is it the timeline of the steps? Just speaking on behalf of yesterday's press conference. That's a loaded question. First of all, this timeline is very flawed. It should have happened a long, long time ago. Second of all, the deterrents, that's what I'm calling them, deterrents that were mentioned in yesterday's press conference are mediocre at best. All of our classrooms do have a white call button. However, we do have older buildings in our district that probably need to be swept through and checked this week as well as telephones. Also, um, the code to the phone, some of us did know about it. If you watched on Twitter last night, one of our speakers today, Sarah Comro, had put up an um, impromptu poll asking if we knew about this code on the phone. And 76% as of 11 p.m. last night, most of us are like, uh, we don't even know what that is. So I'm pretty sure that after this week, more than likely our administrators, we are begging our administrators actually to make sure we're equipped with the correct information, most updated information to get us through May 26. Secondly, I'm not 85 years old and that is sarcasm. I don't need a lifeline button on my neck. What I need are resources. What we need are resources. We need social emotional learning strategies. We need actual restorative justice practices that help our students from minor incidents up to major incidents. Our students lack just, just social connections for the last couple of years where they're very disconnected in the classroom and they need guidance from their teachers. Their, their educators, all of us, support staff, our administrators, and our teachers. We're all on the front line. We need the resources like yesterday, like last week before our El Dorado teacher fellow colleague ended up in the hospital. We need resources now. Short-term goals need to be met now. Long-term goals need to be met and talked about now. Any other questions? Go ahead. Do you think just the impact of the virus we've seen, do you think that will have an impact on staffing for the remainder of the year and then also going into next year? Absolutely. As of right now on social media, there are probably teachers on any type of community group. And this is hard for me to even say this because I love this job. It's my heart. Uh, many of our colleagues are probably going to walk out even as of this week if they have not already turned in a resignation by today. It's simple and easy. We go into a system, we click a couple buttons, and bam, we send it into the district. We don't have to come down to this lovely building to sign, up, sign out and say we're done.